please subscribe to help you and your motorcycle perform better. My name is Dave Moss. I tune approximately 3,500 bikes per year. This is Two Click Sound. Now steal the microphone, Matt. Jeff's here with us today to walk us through, ta-da, Ninja 400. Yes, sir, we have the brand new 2023 Ninja ZX4 Double R. I think the, the first thing I want to point about, out about this bike is its exclusivity. It is a Double R, so it's not just a standard run-of-the-mill R model like we've seen with the ZX6R, the ZX10R. So it has a lineage and a lot of the features and tech and functions derived from what Kawasaki's learned in World Superbike, World Super Sport. So when we get into that, you're starting to see things come into these bikes, like the center of gravity is derived from the zx 10 R. the engine positioning in the chassis is derived directly from that bike, the swing arm pivot height as well is derived from the zx 10 R. This bike does feature a steel trellis frame that was chosen uh, along with the different piping diameters within the frame to offer the handling and the flexibility needed to make this bike handle as it does. So a lot of riders are going to find that this bike, they can maximize its potential on the road as they like to ride it, or here at Sonoma Raceway as well, or any other track for that matter. Sure. Um, how many of these are brought to the US? I'm gonna estimate we're at about a thousand in production. So it does have a lot of exclusivity again, uh, mm -hmm. similar to a ZX10 R. Okay, so then let's start at the front of the bike okay. and work our way around. So. so the first thing to note about the ZX4 is the ZX family of styling. It happens to be a Ninja 400 right next to me. So we can see the differences where the ZX borrows the front air duct for the twin ram air system, just like a ZX6 or a ZX10R. So it's twin ram, it's not straight through the steering That's head? That's correct. Uh, after the, the duct, it splits into two, it comes down the sides of the fairing and then feeds the air box from two inlets. Perfect. Okay. Well, that's, that's definitely new. Um, obviously, shape is very similar. So that styling cue is there, but again, that's all going to be engineered and wind tunnel tested just to make sure that we're getting the right Venturi effect and the ram air effect in the box. That's exactly it. That's correct. Okay. Um, also in the front end, the next thing we notice is the twin 290 millimeter disc brakes with Nissan monoblock calipers. Uh, this motorcycle does also feature the latest Nissan ABS system, which is the most compact and lightweight that they currently offer. So sometimes that's an objection for people who are looking at an ABS bike versus a non-ABS bike is the weight or do they need it, but this right here is the lightest system available. Have we got braided lines or rubber lines on the front? We do have rubber lines on the, on the motorcycle. Okay, so that's, that's that. And then the master cylinder, is very similar to the 400. That's correct. Being a cast unit. That's correct. Any plans for this to become a radial at some point? Not to my knowledge at this point. Okay. So then essentially that may or may not come in time because obviously that's that's going to be a question somebody will ask. Correct. All right. And then moving down the bike. So the bike has a six speed transmission with quick shift for your upshifts. It also has an auto blipper for your downshifts, which the guys so far here today are telling me is buttery smooth. Um, it does have a slip and assist clutch. So the way that would work is under uh, banging out a bunch of downshifts all at once, it would allow power to be released through that clutch. So the rear wheel is less likely to lock up in a situation like that. And then on the assist side, the way the mechanism works is under load and higher RPMs, it'll bind in on itself and hold tighter and tighter as well. Okay. So it's not a ramp system to come apart then. Right. It'll actually it move is. in and out of itself. Yeah. Right. Okay. Rear set design, that seems generous with right. the foot pegs where they are. Right. Um, any, any of the boys get close to the pegs this morning? Not that I've seen. Uh, Brandon here has removed his feelers. Uh, we'll have to check He's some of the other brave bikes. fella. But I think he knew ahead of, the time, ahead of time what he was planning to do today. Yeah. And then next piece for us is the rear shock. That's right. So the rear shock really comes directly from the ZX-10R. So it's a Showa BFRC light. So it is fully adjustable for preload, compression, and rebound. 
um, and obviously it's going to be sprung and damped for this bike, but it is essentially the same unit as what's on the ZX-10R. Okay, um, for those that go to the track, there's a, a question obviously right out of the gate. Yeah. Tail section, how quick is that to disconnect? Disconnect, I believe you're talking about uh, two plug-ins in the tail and four bolts and it's gone. So bye-bye yeah. road bike. Quick and easy. Yeah. And also with the rear shock, let's go back to that for a moment. Yep. It is configured like a ZX-10 in the horizontal backlink position. What that does is it kind of hides the shock from some of the heat that's going to come off the engine. So you're going to have more consistent performance in the damping as because your oil wouldn't get as hot within the shock from just engine heat. All right. And then the other vital component about the back of the bike is the swing arm. Correct. Yeah, it's used in arch swing arm design. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the pivot height is taken directly from a ZX-10RR and that math and that theory that they've gotten out of World Superbike and how they've developed that unit, as well as the length uh, was taken into consideration as in order to make the bike handle as it does in, in combination with the front brake and trail. Okay, so fully adjustable shock for preload, rebound, and compression. Correct. Front forks, we've got preload only. That's right. And that's in the right leg. So the assumption is damping is going to be in the left leg. Correct. Do we know if it's a cartridge? I would guess it, it is. It is cartridge style, yes. So that could come out and be revalved. Yes. Is there a spring in the left leg? Not to my knowledge. So that one it would just be on. like a ZX6. Exactly. Spring in one leg, damping in the other. Okay, so at that point, that makes sense. Fuel capacity? Um, I believe it's 4.2 gallons. Okay, so there's plenty of fuel in right. there that'll last you a while. Right. I don't know that Brandon's filled up again today, so. Right, but the, the other part of that is, where's he going? Right. So there's two other specific things then for people on the street to understand on the fork travel as well. So fork travel, we went and looked into the specs. So your bottom out is actually five millimeters up. So you know that's where you're roughly gonna hit mechanical is five. Without taking the bike apart, we don't know of the engineering inside to see if there's a hydraulic. And then on the rear shock, you can see your travel right there. So a tiny bit of grease on the shock shaft will tell us how much travel we've got. And at that point, dialing becomes much easier. Yes, and going back to fuel capacity, uh, 3.96 gallons. 3.9. 3.9. Okay. Braking period, same as any same other as 600. Any, yeah. And then um, in regards to this specific bike, have you ridden it yet? I've not. I'm not, I'm waiting for that. I'm waiting for the day I get that opportunity, so. Isn't that cool? Oh, don't you have a phone call? Well, Brandon owes me a favor because yeah, exactly. I went from Sacramento to Reading to the Bay Area to deliver this to him, so, so I, I think I, I'm due. I believe he's got to sit down a session in the sim bin and call it good right, right. and be patient. Right. Um, any other comments on the bike that you generally want to make? We've been through its purpose, its function, the design brief. Um, these just came out in the 80s, and we had four-cylinder 250s, That's right. and we have four-cylinder 400s. Given the Asian market, in sp specifically, and India, do you think this will catch on? I think it will. I mean, there's four here today, three right here, and one down the way. And, and one more coming. We, can, we can't keep them in stock. So whoever wants one better hurry up and find the few I think it's. I think it's a bit late. Right? I know I probably got the last one in Sacramento. Yeah, I think you did. Um, so. But I think one thing we can't forget too is the suite of electronics uh, okay. that are offered in the bike. So we talked about the quick shifter and the auto blipper, but it has a 4.3 inch uh, TFT color display. So if we want to go over here. Yeah, let's do this. And we're starting to see this on a lot of the newer Kawasaki's. So this is one of two displays available. Um, so the rider is going to be able to see, obviously, their fuel level, 
the rider mode that they're in. So yep. you have uh, sport, road, and rain. And there's also one that is fully customizable called rider. So in the rider mode, you can specify the throttle application and the traction control that you desire. Whereas okay. in the other modes, they are preset to each of their modes correspondingly. You need to go here in these buttons? You would need to go to the left side. Uh, have you been through the I dash? have not yet. So let's play. Okay, let's play. So we'll switch. Right. I'm going to go around the back. You okay. go around the front. All right, first off, let's figure out how we change mode. So mode. Let's play. We're playing. Let's see what we do something. Right. Let's see what All right. happens. So if we okay. hold the down button for two seconds, we went sport to road on the top left of the dash. I bet it's going to go to rain with one more of those. So it's just for a couple seconds, we went to yeah. rain mode. And then to go back up, which is similar to other yeah. Kawasaki's, hold the button for a couple seconds, and you're back up to sport mode. So that takes care of that. Then the center button, what does that give us? In this mode, I see no change from it in this mode, but it is labeled lap. So on the other version of the display, okay. there's a lap timer built in. That display is going to be more oriented towards the racetrack. So sure. you'll have the time display right in the middle, and this is where you're going to start clicking off your lap times using this button on the left side. Okay. What's your weight? 180. 180. So 80 millimeters. And we don't know where mechanical bottom out is yet, so we still have to assess that and figure that out and put a black mark on it. Um, but we'll get to that. So watch your shoulders. So rebound's not set correctly. 590, off you go there, Brandon. 590. Six. 20. So 30 millimeters, but we have all that static sag. So we gotta tighten it down. To do that, we have to take the footrest away here so we can get access to the shock. The preload ring is super thin here, so be very careful when you make the adjustments. Make sure you have the right tool. Okay, so that's one full turn. And that is probably 50% of the static removed, so we'll start there. Snug up the collar. And then for the purposes of tuning, we're gonna go ahead and leave that left side foot peg off the passenger. Alright, let's see where our starting settings are. Half one, half two, two out on compression. Two out on rebound, and we know rebounds is too fast. So we'll go one and a half. Still too fast. One and a quarter. Still too quick. Three quarters. Much nicer. Compression is half one, two, three, four. So two in is halfway to start and up in here we can see the shock shaft so with a tiny bit of grease on that we can assess how much travel is being used so that'll take care of that now onto the front that's topped go all the way up so fully extended is 130 mil so what we've got to figure out is where is bottom out here so we'll have to look up some specs, year make model, and it'll tell us front wheel travel or fork travel. Yeah. As soon as we can figure that out, we're gonna put a little black dot here, which will tell us where bottom out is. And at that point, we can see what we've got for sag, because right now there's a guess, not an accurate number, because we don't have it. With Aaron on it, and it fully stretched, the front is at 50 millimeters, five zero. So we're gonna put in four turns of preload, Set that to the top and send him out, and in the interim, we'll do the research. 
with the star gear, you can use a six millimeter Allen and that works perfectly. Half one, half two, three, half four. Okay. So that puts the baseline into the chassis back on the bike for me. Five millimeter Allen. All right, so we'll give it a go, fingers out. So that's good. Okay, go ahead, hold the grip. Go get the brake lever without moving it. So brake lever is too high. Question is, will it move? And if it will move, how much? It does a tiny bit and then it locks out. Interference fit between the master cylinder and the handlebar. Okay, try that. So it's still not where it should be because this piece is colliding with the handlebar and unfortunately we can't get it as low as we want. If you were to replace this with a standard radial master and then create a mount for the reservoir, then you could get the angle you want. On the clutch, it's gonna be a different story. So. That's perfect. So you can see that nice radial light where everything's straight through his forearm. So that takes care of that. Last detail we need is fork height. And we are at 17 millimeters. So if this front end proves to be too soft and we overpower the spring, meaning it's gonna blow through the oil, we have the option to push the front end down to stop dive and actually make it steer and brake way, way, way more compliantly and easily. Foot under the shifter, pull up on the shifter to the top. So if that angle is less than 90 degrees, that muscle goes rock hard. So technically with just trainers on, if his boots are thicker, then the angle's gonna be less. But for this, position right now it is too high so that muscle goes really hard then you're obviously getting too high on the ankle so goal anything greater than 90 degrees here in your ankle at the top of the stroke is what we want so try it and if you find this muscle your legs get tired from shifting and drop it three millimeters okay tire pressure what you're gonna run but what pressure? Uh, let's go for the morning. Let's go 30, what, 31. I'd go 3230. 3230. To start. Okay. Sun's up. It's not cold. Right. So there's, and it's a street tire, so it's going to heat up fast. Yes. So let's try that. 3230. Yep. Okay. And then the last thing is to put a cable ties reset. So pressure set, and we're good to go. You're out of here. Go enjoy your first session. And then we will see you after the fact. Thank you, sir. Yep. All right, so on the spec sheet, bottom out's going to be basically five millimeters up. So, right about there. That's all we can get to. So, Aaron came in from the first session right around here. So, preload wise, just on the siding, just riding around, we're already too soft. I would have preferred to see it there. So we're gonna add three turns of preload to the front. On the rear shock, now the oil is hot. Look at the pogo on the back. So go, we're going to change rebound to half out for maximum. And that solves that perfectly. The other thing I want to do is put in another quarter turn of compression. How you doing, brother? 
Alright, yourself? Good, good. That guy was like, Ready for run two. I was there. Okay, day one on the bike. Day one on the bike went well. Um, stock, fully stock. Um, Kawasaki did a great job. Auto blipper was brilliant, super smooth, up and down shifty. Um, brakes weren't too bad. Um, I'm kind of spoiled with my race bike, so. But stock in comparison, very well. Uh, initial turn in was great. Very smooth, um, very easy, um, and very agile. Coming off of going from a 600 to the 400. Um, uh, Favorite thing about it? The comfort level that it provides while doing what it does. As in ergos, or just leaving you alone in seat while you ride? Alone in seat while you ride. Ergos definitely need to be, in my opinion, for more for the racer profile definitely need to be adjusted um feet need to come up um i think bars might be, need to be pushed out just a little bit that may help definitely the foot uh the shift the shift lever is um a little too high so um, if you don't have a tall tall foot tall shoe box it's it's rather tall so that definitely needs to be adjusted okay um weight comparison the weight's nothing but a number it does not feel like it weighs over 400 pounds on the track. It's right. super nimble. So I'm impressed. Good job, Kawasaki. Um, favorite part of the track on this today? Favorite part on the track? Uh, stay planted through the carousel. Yeah, for Very sure. Well. It was brilliant. Um, it did really well. Uh, it was planted through some of the bumpier sections, 3 and 3A. Um, it, it did fairly well. It didn't stray away from the line. You, it was uh, almost a point and shoot. Excellent. Um, what tire pressure did you choose to go to this morning when it was cooler in the high 50s? Uh, this morning we started 32 front, 30 rear, and then the afternoon we bumped up to uh, 30, 34 front cold and 32 rear. I mean, it's high wear. Degree, we with a four degree uh, in Typically a four degree rise coming off of the track. No tire warmers. This is the stock uh, right. GPR 300 Sport Maxes that come in. Yeah, and they did a great job on track. They and we got very well. we got great wear out of them. Then uh, lastly then, what's this dive bombing thing in corners? Oh, dive bombing, you can late break crap out of it into corners. It's great. You can do a Tony Elias? <laughs> More like an e is going into the chicane when it's coming in backwards. <laughs> One it, day. It is very confidence inspiring, isn't it? It is. I recommend it to those uh, getting into track riding, amateur racing, things like that. It's, once it's further developed, it's a really brilliant platform to transition to. Well, welcome to the 400 Club, sir. Definitely. Thank you. You're welcome. Glad you had a great day. Thanks, Dave. Okay, first ride heading out on the 400 Double R. See how it does. And it's in C Group, so this is exploratory only. This is not going to be push it and see what we can do. This is not my bike and not the purpose of the video. So all I'm looking at is fueling, agility, braking stability, and then mid corner speed in some of the long radius corners that the bike will track without me putting second and third inputs into it. So we're about ready. I think they're releasing up the grid. So let's get on it. Okay, you would save it for the best session of the day, right? Brandon, so we got full power? Yes. And TC1? Yeah, full power, TC1. And minimum? Yes. And so, the blipper is on. Blipper is on? Yep, you have up and down. I thought it was quick shift only up. Oh. It's brilliant going downhill into the chicane, everything. Okay. Just hit it, hit it. Regular braking. Are you street or track? Gearing? It's OEM. OEM. Yep. See if I can remember that. <laughs>
Okay, away we go. Last session of the day in C Group. All we're gonna do is discover what the bike's got. I am running street shift pattern. So again, looking at braking stability, long corner stability, and see how the bike performs on fueling based on throttle position. So this is Brandon's bike. So I've been dialing this all day for him. So I'm kind of getting a cheat in regards to settings and not jumping on the stock bike and then refining it. When I eventually get mine, we'll go way, way, way more in depth to make sure that what we've got is correct. So at this point, we have also street tires on. So clearly we're not gonna go bonkers, knee down right out of the gate. We have auto blip and, according to Brandon, up and down with the gearbox without the clutch is not a problem. Well, the butter part they were all talking about on the gearbox up, absolutely, that is awesome. Downshift one gear doesn't affect the pitch of the bike whatsoever. We'll bring it around to the bottom of the carousel. Okay, so now open up, go to full throttle, and we've got TC on minimum. So, in fifth gear, there's no pull, which you'd expect is 400. You want to be able to race the thing later, then go through the RPM range. So we'll go around. Four. Fifth, and we'll keep it in fifth. Now through the S's is a great test of the chassis agility. Because you've got to move quick on it. And that doesn't require a huge amount of effort. But as always, it requires good timing. So, fourth, third, into nine. Again, deliberately slowly, we're trying to learn the bike. Four, fifth. And then brakes. Right at the end, it does drop quite a bit once you get to maximum braking. But that's to be expected, it's a street bike. <laughs> That's easy between spring rate valving, oil viscosity, etc. So we'll pick our right line, lap number two. Very, very little energy input required to get the bike to turn. What's that RPM at five? Six. 6,000, it starts to pick up a little bit, but again with emissions, it's, it's tight. On the throttle, it's definitely holding its line. Change my line at will. The bike doesn't protest at all. And we'll come in with the downshift. Set up. Again, we're just going around the corner. Not trying to do anything extraordinary yet. Open her up a little bit in four. Now we'll set up. So we'll go through the first gate there, in through the second gate, drive again, yeah right around 8 it wakes up, and then after 10,000 it definitely wakes up. Now braking into the hardest corner. Back 
gearbox is just gorgeous. the big bumps up between two and three beautifully hard breaking into four not an issue no chatter at all just keep adding traction Nice and easy. Set up again for the carousel. Now I'm going to whip wide, so let's bring it back. Let's use the throttle. We're in fifth. So we know we've got no gas. We'll drop it to four. And it picks up again right around eight. First gate. Second gate, nice. Line it up. It's so well balanced. All of that ZX10, ZX6 technology in terms of engine placement. Phenomenal. It's such an easy bike to ride. over eight works perfectly so if you can keep it above eight thousand with the stock tune that makes perfect sense the fueling is really smooth but you will get punished if you're in and out of the throttle, so being very deliberate but smooth with the throttle is critical. So you can just add throttle and it just holds to it beautifully. Keep it on track. There's the line, there's the throttle, now in third gear, open her up. And it accelerates way nicer. Keep our radius. We'll be patient it back and we'll do the pass over 8C. Again, disrespectful, waiting. Try second gear out of 11 this time, very jerky on the fuel, but that's mostly my problem. So third is a much better gear for the slower corners. Line 
river is bumpier. That is still very supple with the setup that's in the bike, even though the rear shock is slightly firmer. And leave it in third for the slower corners that seems to be really nice on the motor and the rpm with the stock gearing now we'll get a cleaner run through the axis full throttle no problem at all activated the abs didn't take the bike offline at all. Not at all. Fantastic. As far as the technology goes, that's, a, that's just superb. Again, second, just to get the roll. is doing a great job in front of us so we'll go ahead and stay with it a nice clean pass is going to come up on four if i can get there before they do which i can so nicely timed again in c group we're just being respectful and learning the bike go a little wider and later that's actually better but it's pushing a hair wide so for me compared to the actual owner and I'm quite a bit heavier that makes total sense because I get on the back the back squats the front extends and we're definitely running wide so that's a setup issue probably just even a small spring change and we'll be good okay one more lap because I think pretty much got to grips with this thing they're not flying now correct pull back perfect not an issue at all okay we'll go in we got the R&D we needed for a non-adjustable front fork, that does really, really well. So once we open that up and look at valving, the initial presentation, even for a, a genetically gifted human like me, it works well. So for a lighter rider, they're going to feel like they can break the gate. Well, that is an astonishing package right out of the gate. And I've always been an advocate of small bikes because it really develops your skill set gets you to understand corner speed and entry and how to finesse your brakes and braking so brandon thank you very much for the loan jeff thanks very much for coming out today and talking to us in a formal capacity about the bike and while there's a limited number of bikes being that are available i have absolutely no doubt that everybody that owns one of these is going to be just ecstatic so let's park this up and go give the smiles to the owner who was no doubt looking out the window and somewhat concerned that his bike was going to be back but of course it's me so of course it's coming back in one piece kidding me
Thank you, Brandon. So you'll hear the testimony as I'm riding the bike because I have a microphone on it in my helmet about what it's like riding the bike on track. And so when you're out on a new bike for the first time that doesn't belong to you, you're respectful, you're careful. When I'm doing this in my professional capacity, I'm there to understand what the bike shows me, really appreciate what the bike offers me, and then try and evaluate where potentially there might be a weakness of, that needs some attention. Now, any small bike is going to feel silly. It's going to feel light and bouncy and, and go all over the place. This feels super light, but because of the engineering from the ZX6 and ZX10, especially in regards to the engine placement and the swing arm and the pivot height, it's rock solid on its side when you're applying throttle. Obviously, there's not a ton of horsepower there to play with like you would have on a 600 or a 750. But the purpose there is to get that engineering right, it allows the bike to be really stable. So the first thing, as Jeff's interview said, going around the outside of somebody, you almost feel like apologizing. Sorry, sorry, excuse me, 400, sorry. Um, because you have absolute faith on it with the stock tires. It never once gave me a moment. Uh, then it was just a case of, okay, how, how is the brake? Because Sonoma is all about brake go, brake go, brake go. And I went for the brakes with intent and purpose in turn nine for the bus stop. And just as Jeff said, and that, that's it. You were aware that it worked. You were not smashed into the tank with your groin. You were just given an indicator that, hey, you're braking sufficiently hard that you triggered some software and you're getting this effect. So it's very welcoming. Because some electronic can be extremely daunting and just slap you. In this case, it was pay attention. So at that point, being able to ride and brake and brake with pressure and duration with a non-adjustable fork for 80% of the braking situations that stock fork with my genetic build would work fine, especially in C group. Would it work in A group? No, of course not, because the bike, any motorcycle has to be built for that standard of performance. But as a base package offering right away, phenomenal. Next aspect, drivability. At no time, because I was using third, fourth, and fifth gear, did I feel that I would change the gearing on the bike because I'm leveraging the RPMs. Below six, eh, takes a minute. Below eight, eight, five, yeah, it's still uh, it's waiting for the power band, but then after eight, eight and a half, it comes in and it just smoothly accelerates away. Again, part of all that ECU technology, everything engineered into the bike that's been leveraged from the ZX10 and six to come into this motorcycle. I think once we get a bike into race trim, that's a different story altogether because it's meant to be built for that. But as an initial offering for a new user, it gives you tremendous confidence that it's not gonna do anything. Partial throttle openings, obviously with emissions, there's, there's a certain flat spot in there, but that's okay. If you ride past it, but flawless. And it really makes you literally giggle in your helmet. Last piece going through long radius corners with higher speed, especially turn two here at Sears Point, or for the old guys, Sonoma Raceway, they don't recognize that, but the younger people do. Coming out of turn two, going to turn three, there are a series of ripple bumps there that are literally like that and about that tall. And it is violent and abusive on a track bike. On this, eh. Yeah, a couple of the bigger ones. Oi, it's bumpy there. Outside of that, sucked it right up. Tremendous technology in the suspension. Again, aimed at a big variance of performance that's really welcoming to the new rider. So overall, as an initial package offered to an individual, the grin factor is enormous. The engineering for the engine height placement, chassis tuning, is incredibly confidence inspiring. Braking, I think the brakes are a little too powerful, to be honest, but the ABS complements that brake power no problem at all, so it's a very nice marriage of technology and pressure and duration 
with the pads between the rows. And then lastly, obviously, everybody's going to think about getting a pipe and a remap and all the other stuff. We're not there yet. So let's not cross that bridge, let's not talk about it. For those of you lucky enough to become one of the 400 Club, which is going to be a dedicated sub-channel on my YouTube, let's talk. Let's share some video. Let's get some information going about how wonderful this motorcycle is just to ride it. And for people to get on it and come back with a big grin going, damn it, what do you mean there was only a thousand? Who, who said we can only have a thousand? So there's, there's going to be a little jealousy around, I think. And these show up and people are going to go, oh! <laughs> Snooze you lose, right? So I feel very blessed and fortunate to be able to pick one of these up in a couple of weeks and join the club and donate everything I learned to you via video through my YouTube channel into the 400 Club section. And I think for everybody that buys one, we'll all be unanimous in the fact that small bikes are fun. And inline fours are even more fun. And it, I'm wondering who's gonna bring a V4 out, 400, like way back when with Thunder. But that's for down the pipe. If this catch is on, you'll be surprised that they will be more fun than the 400s. Because history always does cycle, and this engine configuration is a wonderful one. So thank you very much for it. An absolutely inspiring motorcycle, Kawasaki. That really did exceed, I think, everybody's expectations that have gone on it today. So I am super excited about working with the bike, developing the bike, and sharing everything I learned. Dave Moss can tune your suspension no matter where you are on the planet via his remote tuning service. Contact Dave on Facebook or by email, dave at davemosstuning.com.